Okay, this is J-Man Time, and today I have a video on top 5 rare Austro-Hungarian infantry weapons that should have been used during the early part of World War I, and these include some rare infantry weapons that were designed in the years before World War I, and that could have been very useful as advanced infantry assault weapons during the First World War, and that could have been useful in preserving Austria-Hungary, or at least preserving the territories of Austria and Hungary in the post-war era in case the Austro-Hungarians were to still lose the conflict. So let's go over it. Now, during the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian army actually did have a lot of advanced infantry weapons that include some machine pistols, submachine guns, and other projects that were developed in the years before and during the war, but most of these were never mass-produced, and only a few of these really stood out. Now, as a result of this, the Austro-Hungarians were mostly using their older weapons or their standard infantry weapons, most of which were designed in the late 19th century. World War I was a conflict mostly fought with both action rifles and fixed machine guns, but there were a lot of advanced weapons that could have been adopted and that could have actually changed the outcome of World War I as a whole. And here are some of the infantry weapons the Austrians could have dominated the battlefield with if they had adopted these weapons early on in the war or before the war. And the first weapon on the list is the Steyr Hand M1912-P16, also known as the repeater pistol in Steyr Hand. And this was an Austro-Hungarian machine pistol concept that was designed b between 1915 and early 1916 and entered limited service during the First World War in the hands of some Austro-Hungarian stormtroopers. And this was based on the Steyr Hand M1911 and M1912 semi-automatic pistols which were fed by a stripper clip instead of the now traditional box magazine or hand grip fed box magazines. The Steyr Hand repeater pistol in P16 was chambered for the 9x23mm Steyr and was fed by two 8 round stripper clips giving it a 16 round magazine. The weapon had a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute and this weapon here was designed as a trench sweeper or a trench broom as they would call it later on. And this was a machine pistol that was meant for Austro-Hungarian stormtroopers in the First World War. Only 960 of these weapons were ever produced, including one spin-off series, which I will go over next. But if the Austro-Hungarians had taken this weapon seriously, they would have had a standard issue machine pistol for Austrian troops operating in the trenches. Keep in mind, the Austrians were mostly fighting the Russians and Italians on both the Eastern Front and the Italian Front in the First World War, but they were also fighting smaller nations like Serbia and Montenegro earlier in the war between 1914 and 1915. And a weapon like this would have made those front lines move a lot quicker because the Austrian troops would have had a machine pistol for close quarters battle. And keep in mind, most of their enemies were using bolt action rifles with some using shotguns on the Italian and Russian fronts, but these were pretty rare. If the Austro-Hungarian soldier had a machine pistol, they would be able to mow down literally thousands of troops with almost no problem. And this weapon being fed by stripper clips would have allowed them to save ammunition, although I would say a traditional hand grip fed box magazine would be a better system. Now the Austrians actually did develop another machine pistol, but that one didn't come out until late 1917, so that was pretty much too late. But this weapon, the Steyr Hand M1912-P16, should have been adopted, and it is number 5 on the list. And there was a second version of this, known as the Steyr Hand M1912-P16 Doppel Pistoli. And this was pretty much the same concept, the same weapon, except it was two pistols, two versions of the same gun, fused together into one super machine pistol. And this was also unveiled in the same year, although the numbers... The number of these that were produced is largely unknown, but it must have been at least a hundred of the 960 of these that were produced in total. And that's pretty much it for the Steyr Hand, a weapon that could have been very useful in World War I if adopted by the Austro-Hungarians in large numbers. Speaking of pistol caliber weapons, the Austro-Hungarians could have also used a rare experimental 
for a limited production semi-automatic pistol carbine that was almost on par or at least on par with the American M1 carbine of the Second World War. And that weapon is the Monlicker M1897-1902 and this was a limited production semi-automatic pistol carbine that was derived from the Monlicker Model 1894 semi-automatic pistol. And this weapon here was chambered for a rare cartridge known as the 7.65 by 32 millimeter Monlicker, which was pretty much a beefed up elongated version of the original Monlicker pistol cartridge for the original Monlicker semi-automatic pistol of the early 1890s. And this weapon was fed by either a 5 to 10 round external box magazine, which made it much better than the other pistol carbines. Keep in mind the Austro-Hungarians had developed a number of pistol carbines based on their existing semi-automatic handgun designs, but most of those were fed by stripper clips. This gun here was fed by a box magazine, either a 5 to 10 round magazine, and it had an effective range of 50 to 200 yards, pretty much the same as the M1 carbine of the Second World War. So this weapon here could have been the M1 carbine of the Austro-Hungarian armed forces, and this would have given Austro-Hungarian troops, especially the stormtroopers, a lightweight, a lightweight semi-automatic pistol carbine for close quarters combat against Allied troops mostly armed with both action rifles and some light machine guns which would have given the Austro-Hungarians more stopping power than the average Allied soldier. Keep in mind, the French army on the Allied side also used semi-automatic pistol carbines too, imported from the US, and these were the Winchester's Model 1907 and Model 1910 semi-automatic pistol caliber hunting carbines, and the French would import at least five to 10,000 of those weapons, along with Russia also importing about 5,000 of those weapons too but those were pretty rare on the battlefields of the French and Russian armies. But the Austro-Hungarians could have had their own semi-automatic pistol carbine equal to that of the World War II era M1 carbine if they had adopted this weapon early on in the years before World War I. That wasn't the only semi-automatic rifle slash pistol carbine. Another semi-automatic rifle project came in 1905, and this weapon here could have been the Austro-Hungarian equivalent to the M1 Garand, although with a 5-round magazine instead of the Garand's 8, and that is the Monlicker Model 1905 rifle and the Model 1905 carbine, and these were two experimental projects from the Steyr Monlicker company. The first being an infantry rifle for the army, and the second being a experimental pist a, an experimental semi-automatic carbine for either military or civilian use. The first version, the long rifle, was chambered for the 8x50mm Monlicker cartridge, and was fed by a 5 round internal magazine using the same stripper clip system as the Monlicker Model 1895 series of straight pull bolt action rifles. While the carbine version was chambered for a different cartridge, the 9.3mm Monlicker cartridge, which was a cartridge designed specifically for hunting rifles and carbines. So this carbine version was basically like a semi-automatic um, rifle slash carbine, hunting carbine, for civilian use. The only problem with this weapon is the 5 round magazine. I think that's too short, but keep in mind the stripper clip system is pretty easy to use, at least on the semi-automatic rifle version. The carbine version is fed by its stripper clip system from underneath, similar to a shotgun, except you're using stripper clips instead of shotgun shells. Now both of these weapons could have been adopted and would have given the Austro-Hungarian infantry soldier more stopping power or at least more firepower than the average allied soldier armed with a bolt action rifle. But ultimately this project was abandoned by 1907 and it was pretty much lost to history until the 2010s when Forgotten Weapons, Ian McCollin from Forgotten Weapons actually dug up this piece of rare Austro-Hungarian military history. But this weapon was never taken seriously, and thus the Austro-Hungarians didn't have a semi-automatic rifle for the First World War. The next weapon on the list is actually one of my favorite machine gun concepts or automatic rifle concepts from the Austro-Hungarians, and that is the Frommer Kiroli automatic rifles that were designed in the year 1910. 
Now, these were designed by Rudolf Frommer and Paul Caroli. Both of these firearms designers were of Hungarian descent and are known for developing some well-known small arms in the Hungarian sphere of firearms history. For example, Rudolf Frommer designed a series of semi-automatic pistols known as the Frommer Stop Pistols in the 1910s and 1920s, while Paul Caroli would go on to develop submachine guns for the Hungarian army in the Second World War, and these were known as the Danuvia submachine guns. But many don't know that these two actually developed a fully automatic rifle for the Austro-Hungarian army in the years before World War I, and this is the Frommer Kiroli from 1910, and there were two different versions of this weapon. These two prototype automatic rifles were chambered for the 8x50mm Mautlicker, the first version, and the second version was chambered for the 7.92x57mm miles of cartridge, and they both were fed 15 to 20 round box magazines and had an estimated rate of fire of between 400 and 450 rounds per minute. If the Austro-Hungarians had adopted this weapon, they would have had the Austro-Hungarian equivalent to the French Shosho or the American Browning Automatic Rifle, which were two automatic rifles that were used by the Allied forces in the First World War, although the BAR or Browning Automatic Rifle didn't enter service until the last year of 1918, but the French show show came out in 1913 originally as an anti as an aircraft machine gun, in 1915 later on again as a ground um, infantry support machine rifle or automatic rifle for the French army of the First World War. So this Frommer Caroli Model 1910 series of prototype rifles could have been the Austro-Hungarian answer to trench warfare. Keep in mind the Austrians were mostly using bolt-action rifles with some of the rearguard units using older 19th century black powder single-shot rifles. So if they had a fully automatic infantry rifle, they would have had a true trench broom, a true squad automatic rifle similar to the American Browning automatic rifle and the French show show, and they would have had enough firepower to keep the Allies from taking Austro-Hungarian territory, at least at ground level. But unfortunately, neither of these two prototype rifles were ever taken seriously, and they, the project was pretty much abandoned by 1912, another wasted opportunity for the Austro-Hungarian forces. The final weapon on the list is actually my favorite of the rare Austro-Hungarian weapons that could have been adopted in the early years of World War I, and this is a weapon that could have given the Austro-Hungarians enough firepower to overrun the Allied powers, and they could have launched their own Blitzkrieg early in the war, at least by 1916, in the middle of the war, actually. And that weapon is the Stan the Schutz Hellriegel or Hellriegel submachine gun from 1915. And this here was an experimental Austro-Hungarian pistol machine gun or submachine gun from 1915. Now this weapon was most likely developed by the Steyr company, but there is no real information on this weapon outside of a few photos and some minor details of the weapon that has been released over the decades. Now this weapon was first unveiled in 1915, but the information and photos were not discovered until 2011 or 2012. And this weapon here could have been the Austro-Hungarian answer to World War I. This weapon was chambered for the 9 by 23 mm Steyr pistol cartridge and was fed by two separate systems, either a 20 to 25 round box magazine or a 50 to 100 round drum magazine, and the drum magazine was very similar to the Schwarlow's the machine gun, although the setup is a bit different than a standard heavy infantry machine gun. The rate of fire was between 400 and 550 rounds per minute, that is just an estimate. The actual rate of fire is unknown because it was never recorded, and this weapon here could have been the trench broom that the Austro-Hungarians were looking for. Now during World War I, the Austro-Hungarians were looking for an infantry weapon that was as light as a rifle, but as fast as a machine gun. And the, and the hell we go was basically that weapon. But unfortunately, this project wasn't taken too seriously. And only about one or two prototypes of this weapon were ever produced, and only a handful of photos still survived. 
Why this weapon wasn't taken seriously, we don't know, because the Austro-Hungarians never documented it, or at least the information was lost to history. But for whatever reason, this weapon could have been the number one weapon that could have been useful for the Austro-Hungarian forces in the First World War. Keep in mind, all of these weapons are pretty advanced for the time, and I will say that it might not have saved the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I mean, the Empire was still going to collapse at some point, but at least they could have kept more of their territory after the war. The Hungarians actually suffered the most as they lost a huge amount of territory at the end of World War I in the post-war era. And the Austrians lost some territory, mostly Czechoslovakia, in the um, aftermath of the First World War. And the Austrians could have kept more of their territory, especially the Hungarians. They could have kept more of their territory if they were able to better defend themselves and at least be able to hold their ground on the battlefields of the First World War. And if they had the right infantry weapons, especially some advanced ones like these, they could have held more ground and probably could have advanced even farther than they actually did during the war. So what do you all think of these rare infantry weapons? So please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.